Next up on WTV, an anatomy class performing a dissection, Two a look at a student showcasing their hobby, and this week's edition of Real Talk. WTV's daily update starts now. Good morning, Red Hawk Nation. Today is Friday, March 8th, and I'm Kennedy Williams with another daily update brought to you by Wingspan TV. Nothing keeps a concept fresh in a student's mind like first-hand experience, and that's exactly what one class is doing on campus. WTV's Manuki Matis has the story. Anatomy and physiology is learning about the nervous system. And this week in labs, they took on their first dissection of the school year, a sheep brain. For the past few weeks, students have been exploring the various function and parts of the brain, such as the cerebrum, diencephalon, brainstem, and cerebellum. After finishing hours of writing notes and posters, students were ready to put down the pen and pick up the scalpel. Well, one of the main reasons we dissect is because we spend all year looking at all kinds of two-dimensional pictures of organs and animals and parts and where they're good to learn from. They, they get the idea, they can get the information, the memory. It doesn't become real to them until they can actually see it in dissection when you look at a real organ and you see the actual parts and they're like, oh, so that, you I mean, something 2D looks very different than when you see it in 3D. Um, it takes on a whole nother form becomes m more realistic and like, oh wow, that's what that is. And they actually see the application of the things they've been learning and memorizing. So that's why I think it's important for them to dissect and we do as much as we can. The whole process is environmentally friendly as well, as no animals are killed specifically for dissection. But side note, we do only dissect organs that are from animals that are sent to slaughter for food and meat. So no animals are being killed to supply us with organs. We are just taking advantage of a process that already exists and utilize more of that animal other than just the skeletal muscle to eat. For junior Tristan Seals, dissection is a unique chance to learn more. So my favorite experience dissection is just cutting, I guess just be cutting into like the brain or just any, any part because um, I'm really into like biology and science like that, learning how the body works. So by, by dissecting you actually see every single part you get to even see how they communicate with one, with one another and how it works. So for me, that's like a, a huge interest. Which like I can I can stand the smell and anything like that. Cause like it's just it's very interesting to me. My favorite part is like the hand, hands-on experience of actually getting to do the dissection. Seeing is one thing, but actually like holding the part in your hand, like cutting it up, is actually like it's like pretty interesting to me. You can't just like. You can't just go at it, you have to do a specific way you want to see certain parts of, of, the, of the organ. So that's my favorite part. This is Manuki Matis, reporting for WTV. Although most Instagram accounts usually showcase a person's daily life, one student uses her Instagram to show off one of her hobbies. WTV's Bryn Salakis has the story. Instead of posting pictures of selfies, freshman Mary Hawkins' profile has a more personal touch, consisting of pictures she has taken from around Frisco and around the country. I created my account because I really enjoy photography and I thought, that I thought I'd just share with everyone. I like nature photos because it is, I think it's really cool to capture in its true form. I started about two years ago. My favorite photo I would have taken would probably be... I got this really cool picture of a um, blue robin when I went hiking. I used a Canon camera. I got that camera for Christmas about two years ago, and I just, it was, it's cheap, it's easy to use, and it's, it's really good quality for the price. Even though she enjoys taking pictures of most things, she prefers nature more than anything else. A phone is easier, but I think the camera, like, generally captures what everything looks like. Um, I'll usually go with my friends and I do in like a foresty area or just someplace like calm and like natural, I guess. Reporting for WTV, I'm Bryn Salakis. On this week's edition of Real Talk, WTV's Ariella Rodriguez hits the halls to ask staff and students about spring break. This is WTV's Ariella Rodriguez here with another edition of Real Talk. And today we're going to hit the halls and ask students about spring break. So what are your plans for spring break? Um, I'm just going to chill, you know. I'm going to Las Vegas, but I'm just going to chill there. What are your plans for spring break? 
Um, I'm probably gonna do homework and then maybe hang out with friends at the, the mall and shopping. Okay, so what are you most excited for for spring break? Me, I'm gonna go to church a lot more this, this spring break. I'm gonna go to my church. I'm gonna hand, you know, we handle snakes. I'm gonna handle some snakes. I got me a new uh, ball python I'm gonna use. So I'm very excited to, to get into this again, to have some time to relax and do the things I've been waiting to do. So what are your plans for spring break? Uh, I plan on hanging out with my friends, probably have a lot of soccer over spring break. So what are you most excited for for spring break? Um, probably getting a week off. What are you most excited for for spring break? Um, honestly, just like not going to school or like being able to like sleep in and stuff like that. This has been WTB's Ariel Rodriguez with another edition of Real Talk. WTV Sports brings you a look on what's happening in campus athletics. Track had a meet last night in the Cougar Invitational at the Colony High School. The event took place at Tommy Briggs Stadium. Notable finishes come in the boys 4x4 that came in second place. The team included Jason Ferguson, Bryson Watt, Andrew Ashmore, and Anthony Ortiz. The baseball team kicks things off today with two games at home. The team plays in a non-district matchup at three against Rockwell Heath, who the team has already played this season. It is a short rest for the Red Hawks as they play back-to-back -back games, facing off against Denton Broswell at 6 p.m. Weather permitting, the team will also play Saturday at 9 a.m. against Waco Midway at Dr. Pepper Ballpark. The softball team is also in action tonight as they play in a district matchup against Frisco. The team is looking for their second district win as they play a winless Frisco team. The game is at Frisco at 7.30. Both soccer teams play district games as well. The girls soccer team is fighting to remain in the fourth place position for District 9-5A. They are currently three points ahead of Memorial Heritage and Lebanon Trail. The Lady Redhawks play against the number one seed Independence tonight at Toyota at 5.30. The boys soccer team also faces the Knights. The team shares the same record as Independence as both teams look for the third district win. The game will immediately follow the girls game at 7. For WTV Sports, I'm Davis O'Brien. If you're looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or visit our award-winning website, libertywingspan.com. WTV's Wade Glover brings you today's announcements. There is a philosophy event today during advisory in Coach Lynch's room. There is no school next week for spring break. Students can sign up to take a practice SAT on March 23rd or a practice ACT on April 6th for $10 each during all lunches the week after spring break. NHS is hosting a college admissions panel discussion with seven seniors who have applied to schools across the country. All students are welcome. The panel will be held in the lecture hall after school on March 20th and March 27th. That's it for today's daily update. This is Kennedy Williams with Wingspan TV.